Hey guys, it's Justine, and I wanted to give you guys a little health update video. Thank you so much for all of your well wishes to everyone who left comments, to my friends and family who have sent me gifts and all kinds of things to my house, to brands who have reached out and also sent things. Like it has been incredibly overwhelming, but the amount of love and support that I have felt from the audience and pretty much everyone that I know has been so incredibly just, I, I don't even know what to say. Like I've been just speechless. It was definitely a really tough time because this is something that happened so unexpectedly and I'm incredibly active and healthy and just kind of makes you really stop and realize that anything can happen at any time. So if you missed the video where I talked about the little health scare that I had, long story short, because the video is very long. It's actually about 17 minutes, but it does take you kind of through the whole process of what happened. But I ended up the blood clot in my shoulder. Now, since that video came out, I do have a few more answers, not really that many more, but what was incredibly helpful is hearing stories from you guys. It's so terrible though, that this is like something that is so common and people don't even know the signs or the symptoms. And I was very blown away by how many other people who have been affected by this. Not only you guys that have been affected personally, having it happen to you, but your family members, your friends, people that you've lost because of a blood clot. And it's, it seems so trivial. Like you don't actually realize how severe this is until unfortunately it's too late. And that's when the severity of the issue kind of comes up. So now I just want everyone Everyone to know the signs, the symptoms. I even had an incredible call with the National Blood Clot Alliance, which I didn't even know that was a thing until I started Googling and finding out that there's really not that many resources, but they have so many incredible comprehensive resources, things to look for. And I'll put a link in the description if you want to check that out to get more information because it has been very helpful for me. And I think now just knowing that there's a place that I can go to have these resources. And if you want more information, that there's just kind of like a one-stop blood clot shop for you to go to. And I know I've kind of been making light of the whole situation because that's kind of how I deal with things with humor and even the whole time at the hospital, I was just trying to make jokes and keep my mind off of what was going on. But since then we have some updates, but where I kind of left off was the actual diagnosis of what I have is called thoracic outlet syndrome. In this kind of syndrome, there's various different degrees of it. There's a bunch of things that kind of fall under that umbrella. So the one that I have is kind of the vein type thoracic outlet syndrome where there's not actually enough space in my shoulder for the blood to flow to my arm. And this happens to a lot of athletes, to a lot of younger people who are very, I guess, doing a lot of repetitive motions like swimming, baseball, like a lot of pitchers get this. And I've been doing a lot of martial arts over the past couple of years, more specifically like a lot of sword training, lightsaber, a lot of like that same like repetitive motion. I have basically beat my body up over the past couple of years. This is also something that is completely, I mean, it's not a topic that I want to get into. A lot of people have been coming after me and saying that I deserve this because I got the vaccine. This is what I get. This is what I, I'm like, I'm sorry, what? No matter what you're beliefs are, I am not blaming the vaccine, but I'm also not denying that maybe that could have something to do with it because honestly, we don't have all of the answers. But for those who are curious and just want to really get their little noses into all of my medical history, I did not end up getting the booster shot because I had gotten not, I, I have actually not had COVID. I did have the two shots and then I didn't get the booster because when I went to get it over Christmas, I ended up getting sick. And then through January, my sister ended up getting COVID. So then I never ended up getting the booster. And then now that this happened, I'll be definitely holding off for just a little bit just because of the medications and stuff that I'm currently on, which I'm now on blood thinners for the next three to six months just to get rid of the a part of the blood clot actually broke off in the hospital and then went to my lung. And that's where things get very, very serious because it's very dangerous because that can travel and it could travel to your heart. It could travel to your brain. You could have a stroke and things happen very quickly. So I just wanted to get my vaccine history out there so that people can stop making up assumptions. I didn't even realize that this was a, an issue, this thoracic outlet syndrome. So my entire life, I've been very active in sports. I've always tried to do like a lot of strength training and lifting, but it has been so difficult for me. And I was just like, maybe that's just, maybe I'm just weak and I need to get, work out more. But I have always struggled with doing like overhead presses or doing anything where my arms are held up out to the side. Like they get, I can't even explain like the fatigue that I feel. And then my arms just like slowly like kind of drain 
brain and they start feeling like numb. And this has happened my entire life. So this has not something that is like a new occurrence, but I didn't know that there was a potential reason. And that reason could be purely anatomical the way that a lot of people are kind of structurally built. Their ribs can be placed up too high or you can even have a freaking extra rib. And then that presses on nerves, on veins, or like kind of the muscle tissue and stuff inside of here is all wound so tight that it starts pressing on things that it shouldn't. So that's where the surgery comes into play where they either, oh my God, like they remove your extra rib or they remove said first rib. And there's obviously a lot of you know, complications that can come with that. They could puncture your lung because it's so close and it can do some sort of like nerve damage. And then that can also ultimately lose feeling or then you can be left with chronic pain in your arm. I'm obviously one of the people that I'm like, okay, I don't, obviously I don't like hospitals. I'm, I've never really been to them. I'm always very healthy. So this was all kind of like a very kind of scary sort of experience, but it also made a lot of sense dating back to like why I've always struggled with doing certain types of workouts. Now, a lot of people that I also have talked to who have had something similar have been diagnosed previous to the vaccine. I'm just giving you guys my story and all of the people that I've talked to have all had this prior to the vaccine. I'm not telling you what to do or what you shouldn't do, but I'm just giving you my personal experience, what has happened with me and how I'm gonna kind of now figure out what to do with the rest of my life. Because once you do have a blood clot, that can then lead to others easily. That can then lead to others more easily. And now that I know kind of like the signs and symptoms to watch out for and the different kinds of activities that I have to be careful doing, I'm much more well-informed, but the route that I think that I'm gonna take for the next however long, because they basically gave me two solutions. It's like, you're either gonna be a blood thinners for the rest of your life, or you're gonna have to get your ribs taken out. I'm like, oh God, there's gotta be something else. So I did a little searching, did a little Googling, you know, as we all do, which I mean, you can find a lot of good information, a lot of not good information, but most of the information that I found incredibly helpful was from people who have reached out to me personally, who said, hey, I've had this similar thing. This is what I did and this has worked for me. So I also had someone reach out and they worked with a physical therapist. And after doing a bunch of research as well, there are a lot of physical therapy things that you can do if you have this specific specific type of syndrome. So I'm hoping that physical therapy will work for me. I found a physical therapist. I'm gonna start working with her and see how that goes. Obviously, if surgery is the route that I'm gonna to have to go so that I'll be able to get back to doing lightsaber training and doing martial arts again, then I will probably go that route because I miss it so much. Like I've, I've definitely not been in a very good state over the past couple of weeks. I'm saying that I haven't been filming videos, but it was honestly just like by choice. Like I literally just could not put on makeup or come up here and like make videos, but like me overall, like my health, right? Like I feel great. Like I actually feel better than I did before I went in. So it was kind of like, okay, look, this thing happened to you. Take as much time as you need, Justine. You, hi, speaking to myself. If you wanna freaking watch TV for two weeks, like go watch TV for two weeks because that is something that like you don't really get an opportunity to do very often. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna freaking just really fully recover. <laughs> I don't know if I'm like fully recovering or now I've just kind of like degressed back into, um, I don't know, not feeling well because I'm. it's like a vicious cycle of like, man, I'm just watching TV. I, I should be out doing something. And then it's just like, you know, I'm sure all of you guys have kind of been in, in that sort of a situation, but all things considered, I am doing very well. I just started kind of getting back into a little workout plan. I mean, the doctor, when I left, I was like, yo, do you think I can like run? He's like, yeah, sure, you'll be fine. I'm gonna slowly start getting back into running. I've been doing a lot of like low impact kind of stuff. I've been trying to avoid doing any sort of arm movements, any type of like weightlifting, just because I haven't met with the physical therapist yet. So I kind of want to like have a professional assess, like what do you think I can do? What's the best kind of way to tackle this? Other than that, like I feel great. I've decided to stop drinking caffeine and that kind of stemmed from just not being able to drink it in the hospital. And this has been a purely like a personal choice. This has nothing to do with medical. Like no one has said that I should not drink it, but I can't even explain to you the difference in how I feel. Like I have this sense of of calmness. Coffee, I think is like really was messing with me and I didn't even realize it. Like every single day I would have just 
I was just anxious. Like I, my heart would be pounding. Like I would get worked up very easily about things. Like if something was going wrong, I would just be like, like stressed. And now, I mean, for an example, like my sister and I recorded a podcast and then we forgot to hit stop on the, on the roadcaster and she unplugged it and we lost all the audio for the podcast after like filming for two hours <laughs> recording this podcast. And I was just like, well, you know, that happened. It's fine. And before I would have been feeling so anxious and like stressed out and just like thinking of like all of these other like scenarios of like, well, how do I fix it? I'm just like, that happened. I'll deal with it when I have to deal with it. And I think that most of that calmness has come from no caffeine. And I don't think there's ever been a time that I have been off of caffeine like this long. Because <laughs> normally I would quit drinking coffee for a couple of days, but I would still be drinking yerba mate, which has obviously caffeine in it as well. But I've been no caffeine for like, oh my God, like 24 days now. The hospital, the most pain that I was in, I think was the migraines that I was getting from the lack of coffee and caffeine. That was more painful than the actual like procedures and stuff that was happening, which was kind of crazy and, and kind of made me like reassess. Is that something that I want to be addicted to? And I was like, no, I don't. And, and even before, if I was traveling, like I would be packing yerba mate like in my suitcase and I do miss it so much, but I think in the long run, not having that dependency and being reliant on something, I, I feel so free. <laughs> and I think that freedom has kind of seeped sort of into, I don't know, my, my new like stress-free, carefree kind of mode. I don't even know how to explain it. Like I've never felt this way before. Like maybe it's because I had a near death experience or maybe it's because I'm not drinking caffeine or maybe it's both. So I definitely highly recommend if you are feeling anxious and you drink a lot of caffeine, there's definitely a huge correlation. And and I, this was like a couple years ago. I remember I think Tyler and I were filming and I just like started just like we were about to shoot and I just started like having a panic attack and it wasn't like too aggressive or anything. And I was like, we, I can't film anymore. Like we have to stop. And we just stopped filming and I just like, went and like laid down and I was just thinking about like how much caffeine I was drinking. Like I would drink a cup of coffee in the morning, then I'd have another yerba mate, I'd have another cup of coffee for lunch, I'd have another yerba mate later. And I was like, I'm overloading my body. I'm basically, I'm poisoning it <laughs> essentially with, with so much caffeine. And it's like my heart can't handle that. And just, uh, I was just, I felt so weird. So I will say that um, the only thing that I did kind of fall off the boat on was I was trying not to eat candy or a lot of sugar, but it was Easter this past uh, this past week and Easter candy is, it's it's my weakness. Like I was losing it. I was like, oh my gosh, Easter candy, like peanut butter, eggs, and just like little egg chocolates. Oh, so that I'm not proud of, but at some point I was like, you know what? I'm gonna freaking enjoy this Easter candy because it is delicious. So I guess that was just kind of like a long sort of update of kind of my personal well-being. I, I mean, I'm feeling great. I think the, the one thing is uh, concerning is obviously like we don't really have like a, a set plan yet in action, but the fact that I'm still on the blood thinners is also a little bit scary just because if I do get cut or if I hit my head or if I hit a part of my body, I could potentially bleed out, could have internal bleeding, which is kind of a scary thought to be kind of like walking around in your daily life and just have sort of this extra sort of I don't know, I, I need a bubble of protection around me. So I don't wanna be on blood thinners forever, but all things considered, like I'm leading a perfectly normal life right now. I'm clearly not doing my morning knife fight training because probably shouldn't be knife fighting on uh, blood thinners. Well, I think the doctors thought I was joking when I was like, so I shouldn't be doing any like knife fighting or like any of that. I'm like, no, no, of course not. I was like, okay. I think they thought it was a joke, but little did they know, it was a very, very serious question. I did ask if you guys had any questions on Twitter, and so I thought I would answer a couple of those. Um, Jake is asking, what games did I play most during recovery? I didn't play any games. I watched so much TV that it's absolutely just, <laughs> so crazy. I have some uh, press accounts that allow me to watch some early access to shows, which I'm not going to tell you what, because I don't even know if they're out or announced, but I've watched so much TV. <laughs> not proud of it, but I don't know. I really, really enjoy it. This one's kind of interesting. Aaron is asking if I can discuss my insurance situation and how that relates to the care that I received. Further, as a creator, can you elaborate how, when, where is it easy to find good plans and care? So this is actually kind of difficult because I don't really know know what all my insurance plan is going to cover. So I'm kind of finding that out 
as we go. I know I do have a pretty decent plan since I pay like, I think like five to $600 a month for this. And I've been paying this for like ever since I am self-employed. I do have, I mean, I think it's like a business kind of insurance plan, but I'm like the only one on it. I think there are different tiers of plans, but I think one of the most important things that you can do is have health insurance. Like if there's something that you have to kind of put aside and not purchase or do without, insurance is the most important thing. And I mean, you can get various ranges of coverage. So I think finding something that could be the least expensive, but at least it's something, I mean, cause you have no idea. I mean, I think my medical bills from that stay is going to be, I mean, it's gonna be over a half a million dollars easily because of all of the medication that I was on. I was in the ICU for two nights. I mean, that alone like is just astronomical, plus uh, ambulance, ER, like all of those things are very, very, very expensive. And I think that there's just so much that needs to be done with healthcare, not just insurance wise, but healthcare in general. I don't know, it's it's a mess over here and it's, it's scary, but I'm so grateful. Like I had such incredible nurses. I, uh, my sister was there like every step of the way. She was like washing my hands and like brushing my teeth and brushing my hair because I, I couldn't move. I was just, I was like in this position for like three days straight, like could not move. Uh, so you definitely realize what you can't do when you can't do something and how much you miss that. Like simple things like I just I couldn't go to the bathroom. Like I had to have assistance going to the bathroom. Not a fun time at all. But I guess getting back to your insurance question, um, I will keep you updated because I'm also terrified because there are some plans where I would have to pay 20% of the overall bill after it hits a certain point, which is like, well, let me do the math. Actually, I don't want to do the math, but if my bill is like $800,000, like, I don't know. That's a lot. Don't want to, I don't, I can't, I don't want, I don't want to think about it right now until I have to. And so far the bills have started trickling in. So Ugh. Evan is asking, what is JPEG? So JPEG, whether you like NFTs, whether you hate them, this is a project that I've been working on and I've been hand drawing every single one of these. You guys can follow it on Twitter at JPEG. And um, I'm basically gonna try to do everything in my power to make sure that this is an NFT drop that everyone who hates NFTs, this is kind of like taking that and spinning it so it's not something that you will hate won't be a cash grab. I'm gonna be doing it on an environmentally friendly chain and it's basically gonna be kind of like an extension of me. I love pigs and they've always been such uh, an incredible animal and I just love them so much. So this is gonna be kind of something separate from what I'm doing, but it's also what I'm doing. I've always wanted to have a really cool merch company. There's been so many things in the past that I haven't done that is a uh, pig themed. Um, I have basically, I have like a full children's book that I kind of, wrote many, many years ago that I never ended up releasing. So I kind of want to have that be a part of it. There's incredible merch ideas that I have. And there's also just the aspect of being able to be a part of the community, like the iJacine community. Like this is where we're going to be. Like we're going to be a part of the JPEG. Like you can become a JPEG. You can be yourself, but you can also be this character. So I'm like so excited about it. Like I can't even explain. And I know there's so many scammy NFT projects and that's where it gets kind of interesting because yeah, it's like a lot of these are scams. They're just people that you don't even know and they're just like releasing these projects and people are buying into the hype. I don't even care if this is hyped up. Like if you want it, do it. If you don't, don't. But I want it to be something that's accessible. I don't want it to be like this crazy out of reach project that my real, true I just seen fans who have been here from the beginning, like I need to find you guys. I have to find you and have a way to connect with you so that I can get you a pig. So that's like my goal. I'm trying to figure it all out and it's definitely not that easy, but I have all of the art done. I drew every single thing in Procreate. So just know that when you get a JPEG, like I freaking drew it. I drew all of it. It's been so fun. I love it. I'm so, so, so excited about it. But yeah, I'm still figuring all that out. But if you guys want to follow that, definitely do so. And I'm going to find a way to try to find all of the hardcore IJ fans out there and make sure they can get a pig. So if that's you, just I'm, I'm coming for you. <laughs> Renee is asking if Tim Cook had a lightsaber, what color would that lightsaber be? I think it would be purple because when we were talking about the purple iPad, he seemed super into it. And I feel like we're actually in that video too. He was behind the, um, the rainbow little backdrop that was at Apple. So maybe it could be like a rainbow lightsaber. That would be cool. And Emily's asking, will there be another vlog university soon? Oh my gosh, I've just been discussing this because that was such a fun time. And also as a part of JPEG, like when you're a holder of one of these NFTs, like 
you're gonna get access to other things. So it's like I even envisioned that if you have a JPEG, that would get you early access to getting tickets to Vlog University. This would get you early access to like basically anything that I'm doing outside of like YouTube. So it's kind of, I'm just, oh, I'm so excited about it. And it even kind of is stemming from, I went to the NFT LA conference uh, a couple weeks ago and it was really, really fun. So it was kind of cool to be there like as a community member and not someone who was actually presenting. And it was really kind of refreshing because I got to kind of take a step back and sort of see what the conference experience is like from someone who's attending as opposed to someone who is putting it on. So I feel like I learned a lot about that. Who knows what's gonna happen? Like anything's possible, but Vlog University was so fun and I had so much fun meeting you, Emily, and so many of the people who came out. It would be so funny if I didn't hit record. Cause if I, if I didn't hit record, I'm just gonna go watch TV and just say, you're not getting a video. <laughs> okay, we're recording, oh my God. To say that that hasn't happened before, uh, yeah, I'd be a liar. Cause I've definitely thought I was recording or audio was recording and it wasn't. So that's the update. I honestly can't thank you guys enough for being so supportive and just all of your kind words. And I mean, everyone has been just reaching out. Like it's it's meant so much to me. Like I can't even tell you, like couldn't even like use my little fingers while I was in the hospital. So we didn't really tell very many people while I was there because I didn't want to be overwhelmed and just exhausted by trying to read messages. So I kind of kept it to myself for or at least a week. And then finally, once I was out, had some answers. That's when I made the video. But if you do want to go watch the full video, I'll put a link in the description and you can go check that out and uh, I guess if anybody ever feels not right like you think something is wrong with your body like don't hesitate go advocate for yourself if you think that it might be nothing maybe it's nothing but it could be something definitely you should be on the safe side and go get it checked out even if it's just at some sort of urgent care or something like that like don't even know how time is of the essence like if I would have waited a little bit longer I may have died may have lost my arm so just putting that in perspective of how something that can go from zero to a hundred real quick it can happen with that I will see you guys in my next video and I mean I might as well just say hey if you haven't subscribed hit the subscribe button hit the bell to be notified when I post new videos which now I feel like I feel like I'm back so I'm pretty hyped about it kind of gave myself that recovery time but I miss you guys I miss creating I miss editing um, I'm gonna have to just not watch any more TV for a while <laughs> so I will see you guys in the next one bye <laughs>